Is the cult of Steven Anderson starting to have some major problems? Yeah. Um, I've said it before. We proved last year that uh, Steven Anderson is working with a Roman Catholic uh, organization, a church down in South Africa, the Universal One Church. You can see that study. Universal One Church is definitely Roman Catholic. The guy's name is Bogart or whatever else. The, the Basically, the you know, they're an offshoot of Roman Catholicism, but uh, Anderson teaches a lot of different Catholic types of things, and uh, one of which is the Trinity doctrine. I've shown this in other studies. I'm not going to show it here again, but the Roman Catholic Catechism, right there, the official catechism of the Catholic Church, it says on page 74, number 249 here in the catechism, it says the formation of the Trinitarian dogma. From the beginning, the revealed truth of the Holy Trinity has been at the very root of the Church's living faith, principally by means of baptism. Like the Baptist Church, you know, it's so important, the Baptist thing there. You'll see that as we continue in this thing here. But I've showed this in other studies. Like I said, I'm not going to show it in this one. And it's just a little screen here because I'm doing a Camtasia video. But um, another thing I want to read here real quickly is... Uh, Page 136, it says, Therefore, the Holy Roman Church condemns, disapproves, anathematizes, and declares to be separated from the body of Christ, which is the Church, all who hold any contrary opinions. Talking about the triune God. You say, what's that? That would be the Church Teaches. Documents of the Church in English translation by Jesuit Fathers of St. Mary's College. Right there you go. They anathematize anybody who does not believe in the Trinity you say well Anderson's not going to say a thing well, well we'll see about what he says but here's one of Anderson's little goons and it says let him be anathema brother Bruce Mejia here you'll see about this in just a minute but this this is textbook cult type of stuff here the cult of personality of Stephen Anderson all the people that come and worship him and follow him and all these little offshoots and everything else when they start to have problems, internal problems, they just start to viciously attack and just tear down. And he's firing people right and left and tracking them down, seeing what they're doing and whatever else. And firing more people and threatening people and everything else. You're going to believe some of the stuff he says in this video. It is absolutely insane. And I will say at the very outset of this, if you are part of Steven Anderson's system, uh, you would do well to get out of there quickly. Okay, Avoid another Jonestown, if you know what I mean. Uh, we'll get, you know, if Anderson, if you come some Sunday and there's a big thing, Kool-Aid up front or whatever else, and Anderson's got kind of a crazy look in his eyes, well, you might want to run quickly, okay? But check out some of the stuff this guy says. This is how bad it is in this cult system here. These Trinity nuts. Let's watch. Man, I'm not going to be preaching the sermon that I had planned on preaching this morning. I'm going to be preaching something different. And unfortunately, I've got to start out with some very bad news. And that is that, you know, there are still people in our church who are getting sucked into this oneness garbage and forsaking the Trinity. Now, I find that hard to believe since I've gotten up here and preached it to the point of ridiculousness. I proved it. Hey, you're not supposed to say that it was ridiculous that I talked about it that much. But anyway, you know, I mean, I went up one side and down the other, and I talked about it, and I talked about it, and I proved it with hundreds of scriptures. And then He proved the Trinity with hundreds of scriptures, even though the word Trinity is not in the King James Bible. <laughs> okay. But it's so funny. You'll see him do this thing, and the others do it too. They say either you believe the Trinity or you're a modalist and a oneness her or a oneness heretic. Uh, or you could actually believe in the Bible word Godhead, you know, three in one, body, soul, spirit, one being, what the Bible teaches, you know, but it's so weird to me, you know, they'll just defend this word Trinity, it's just, it has to be the Trinity, and if you're not a Trinity believer, then you're a modalist or a oneness heretic, weird, let's continue. And I even put other videos online, the Trinity Moments, where I'm just one point at a time. Each one of those 48 Trinity Moments disproves this modalist oneness garbage. Any one of them alone does. And there's 48 of them. You know, so I mean, I'm, I'm up here, I'm preaching the Bible, I'm spending hours and hours and hours of time behind the pulpit covering this. 
I'm putting even more videos online. You know, I don't know what else to do as a pastor. I don't know what else to say except for this. This doctrine is not an optional doctrine. The Trinity is a foundation of our Christian belief. It has been for thousands of years, and we will not budge. We will not compromise. And I'm not going to be a respecter of persons. I don't care who it is. I don't care who believes in this garbage. They're going to be called out, and they're going to be thrown out of the congregation. It's that simple. And you know what? If you've been here for years and years, if you're one that's been at our church for years, and you're like, well, I'm just still not sure, then you know what? Just get out and come back when you're sure then. Because you know what? That is not acceptable to come to this church for years and years and hear me preach about it for hours and hours and hours and hours, and you're still not sure if the Trinity's true. You got a problem, buddy. And you know what? You take your problem somewhere else. Now, if you're brand new, if you're a... Can't question. Okay? Don't question the teachings of the church, the holy church, and the man of God that runs it. You watch later on, he'll say it. New believer, if you're a babe in Christ, if you've never even read the Bible cover to cover, you know, and you're not really sure what the Trinity teaches, or you're a little mixed up on the Trinity, then you know what? Hang around, learn the doctrine. But I'm talking to people that ought to know better, people that have been here for years, people that have read their Bibles cover to cover, and they don't believe in the Trinity. There's something wrong, friend. There's something wrong, friend. Uh, well, why don't you show us the word Trinity, and then they might, you know, believe in it or something. I mean, again, did God, you know, kind of miss the fact that, you know, he wanted to be called the Trinity, and that's the best way to describe him, and he just kind of forgot to tell anybody about it when the Bible was being written. You know. They avoid the name Godhead. It's so weird. Let's continue. Now, look, it shouldn't matter who I'm going to bring up. Because God's not a respecter of persons, and I'm not a respecter of persons. And it shouldn't matter who it is. The truth is the truth. You know, and basically there's been two people that have been affected. First of all, Dominique Davis, that's why he wasn't here last Sunday, has been thrown out because he says, oh, God's not three persons, God's only one person. What? Yeah, watch this. Watch what he does to this guy. Hey, sit down, sit down. What are, you, what are you coming up here to do? You want, you want to come take over the service? Huh? What, what do you want? What? I just want a prayer, Ed. Get out of here. Can I get, can I get a little grace? No, no, you can't. No, you, you get out of here. Get him out of here. Drag this bozo out. Pull him out. Hey, help him out. Get him out. Let him walk. Let him walk. Let him walk. Let him walk. Okay, just wanted prayer, just a little bit of grace or something. <laughs> get him out, get him out of here. Get him out, throw him out. <laughs> okay. And you know what? If anybody wants to come up here and take over the service? We'll throw you out of here, buddy. This church is not a free-for-all. This isn't an open mic. This isn't a karaoke bar, okay? I'm the man of God here. I meet the qualifications. I run this church. And if you don't like it, then get out. This I am the man of God here. I meet the qualifications. I run this church. I thought Jesus Christ was supposed to be the head of the church. And I thought the job of a overseer, a bishop, a pastor, whatever you want to say, they're supposed to be there to protect the flock, oversee the flock, not start threatening them. You're dealing with a cult mentality here. Let's continue. Watch this, the nutty actions of this guy. This is not some church where every first time visitor and brand new believer and people who've never even read the Bible are gonna come up and take over the service. Not happening, okay? If you want that kind of watered down leadership, go to some house church with your Amish buddies and sit around the coffee table with your coffee clutch. This is a New Testament church. We have a bishop here. <laughs> this is a New Testament church. No scripture at all for church buildings. No scripture at all for what they're doing. Sunday best, pulpit, the whole thing. Goons that stand up and jump up and grab people and throw them out and whatever else. No scripture. This is a New Testament church. Sure it is. We have an overseer here. Like it or lump it. And if you don't like it, feel free to get up and leave the service at any time. And if you're one of these oneness people, why don't you have the guts? Why don't you have the courage to get up and leave right now? 
Huh? Have the gall and the courage to come and face us and tell us. Instead of being like Dominique who texts us. After he sat, you all heard him sit in the front row of this church yelling amen every time I preached about the Trinity. Go back on YouTube. Watch all the YouTube videos. And what's he doing? He's sitting in the front row yelling amen. And now he's telling people, oh, I never really fully agreed on the Trinity. Then why'd you yell amen every time I talked about it and every time I preached against oneness? I'll tell you why. Because he's a hypocrite. That's why. People are hypocrites who like to sit in the front row and say amen loudly even though they don't even believe in it. That's called being a hypocrite. And then it's like they're yelling amen one day, and then two days later it's like, oh, I've I'm, I'm, got to leave the church because I don't believe in the Trinity. You say, I'm not comfortable with this. Then just take a hike. Go take a hike. You know what? You ought to be thankful that you have a pastor who stands on Bible doctrine and doesn't care what people say. And I don't care if 90% of people get up and walk out or 50% of people walk out. I don't care. Because you know what? I'm not going to pastor a oneness cult. I'm not going to pastor a Pentecostal church. I'm the pastor of a Baptist church. Amen. And if you're not a Baptist, then get out. Amen. <laughs> uh, that's like watching a, a, you know, a little, uh, what am I, I'm thinking pit bull. He's not even the size of a pit bull. Chihuahua is what I'm thinking of. You know, just a rabid chihuahua or something. I'm the pastor of a Baptist church and I can just scream at you and yell, get out of here and whatever else. If you don't agree with me. If you don't agree with a doctrine that appears nowhere in Scripture, you have to believe in the Holy Trinity. It's the foundation of our faith. Know what I mean? And if you don't, you're accursed, a heretic. Hmm. Let's continue with a little bit more of a nut job here. We're not going to let a bunch of heretics come in and split this church and bring in all this junk. This church is going to be unified around Bible doctrine. Amen. It's not happening. He said, unified around Bible doctrine. The word Trinity appears nowhere in Scripture. And the teaching of the Trinity appears nowhere in Scripture. Well, it's just a it's sweetness and light. Can't we all get along? You know, we could all get along if people would actually believe the Bible. But they don't, so sometimes we have to crack some heads. If you're not comfortable with it, go down to Comfortable Baptist. <laughs> where anything goes, where people can believe whatever. Now look, there are lots of doctrines that are optional. You know, things that aren't as clear in Scripture, things that don't affect salvation, things that don't affect the nature of God. If people have different views on end times prophecy, if people have different views on you know, the Jews or Israel or something. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Well, then what in the world are you doing preaching against those things? Do you really believe it or don't you? See, isn't that weird? You know, it's we have to hold the Trinity. We have to hold the Trinity in the highest regard. But if you disagree with me on end times things or who the Jews are or whatever else, well, that's fine. Nigga. Uh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. It's weird. It's just totally weird. I mean, I remember there was a guy that one time tried to join our house church years ago, and he said he's a post-tribber. I said, you're not welcome here. Just as simple as that. If you go post-trib, you will become replacement theology. You will start to say that people can lose their salvation, because they can in the time of Jacob's trouble, and you'll get messed up in all kinds of other areas. And you're serving a God that's going to put you through his wrath and judgment. Why would I let somebody like that in, in our fellowship? I'm not going to. Posties are not welcome. But he's militantly against the pre-trib rapture, but all of a sudden it doesn't matter anymore as long as we all believe the same thing on the Trinity. Weird. Let's continue. You know, you say, oh, I don't quite agree on the reprobate doctrine. Fine. But you know what? The Trinity is not optional. And I, you're going to be shocked when I tell you who's getting mixed up in this now. And I don't know how deep he is into it, but now Garrett Kirschway says that the Trinity is a false doctrine. I mean, he's been up here behind this pulpit preaching the Trinity, preaching against Jesus-only baptism, preaching of all people. He's been here with us all along through all this teaching, through all this preaching. I can't even believe it. 
And you know how I found out? Did I find out because he came and told me, because he had the guts to come and tell me, hey, by the way, I'm on your staff, and I don't believe in the doctrine of the church. I don't believe in the Trinity. No, I found out because I saw his wife commenting on Tyler Baker's videos, like, oh, great sermon, brother. And I confronted him about it. So Garrett Kirchway is not a man because he wouldn't come to Anderson face to face and say that he believes in this or whatever else. Uh, but Anderson's a man because he was trolling the comments of Tyler Baker's channel and saw Garrett Kirchway's wife commenting. Okay. <laughs> sure. Let's continue. Bunch of cowards. Makes me sick. Makes me sick. And you know what? If any of you cowards are out there right now, just come clean right now. Just get up and walk out. Because if you don't believe in the Trinity, you are not welcome in this church. Okay, what are we going to bring in next? The Muslims? What are we going to bring in? Hindus and Buddhists and Jews and whatever? Look, it's a Baptist church. It's not seeker sensitive. You don't want to bring Jews into your church. You know, like Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a Jewish book, people. My word. It's not anything goes. It's the Trinity. It's the Baptist Church. It's not optional. And so as of this morning, he's fired. You know how long it took me to fire him? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And you know what? You know how long it's going to take me to throw somebody out of this church that doesn't believe in the Trinity? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. In other words, you're not free coming to Stephen Anderson's church anymore. You're not free to believe what you want to believe and, and free to look at other things and say, hey, you know what, there, the word Trinity is not in the King James Bible. Huh. I'd like to hear some things about, you know, what other ministries are saying on this whole Trinity versus Godhead thing. You're not free to do that. They're going to hunt you down now and they're going to look at comments and if they see you commenting or if they hear you saying the wrong thing, you're out. You're done. You're finished. It's a cult. Now, you open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, and if by the time I'm done preaching this morning, you don't believe in the Trinity, then get out and don't ever come back. Amen. I'm not going to let this cancer creep in. I'm not going to let this poison in. We are performing surgery this morning. Amen. And you know what? I don't, it, there's going to be no anesthesia. We're using, a, we're using a, a, a hacksaw, okay? So take a swig of Jack Daniels or whatever, because there's going to be no anesthesia. We are cutting this cancer out. And I don't care if we have to amputate the whole toe or the foot or the leg. We're going to save the body. Amen. Huh? I don't care if we have to, to cut the foot or the toe or the whatever out. It's kind of interesting. For as the body, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. All right? Down here, for the body is not one member of many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? You know, it goes down through here. I mean, you know, if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members yet? You know, but yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Or again, the hand, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Unless you're part of Anderson's church, then he can just cut the foot off. He's going to amputate, amputate the foot of the body of Christ, and he's going to, to save the body. He's got to do it. <laughs> what a weird thing to say. But now watch, watch the pride come out. He actually tells the people, he yells at them, do you look at me? You look at me. Don't you look down. You look at me. You watch me. Watch this. This guy's going nuts. We're keeping this thing alive. You don't have to get very far reading the Bible to find the doctrine of the Trinity. Now, let me just make this clear first of all. And if you think this is a repeat or if this is redundant, then explain to me why people are still mixed up. Apparently, it needs to be preached more. Uh, or people might have some real legitimate concerns about the fact that the Trinity is not in Scripture and it's pagan. It's completely pagan. You know, but see, he's going to keep people from asking those important questions. But watch what he says here. Apparently we need more teaching on this. And I'm not going to stop until it's fixed. 
And I would rather die than to pastor some half Trinity church. Not going to do it. You'd rather die. Uh, maybe drink Kool-Aid. Never do a thing like that. Stephen Anderson's far too rational and calm to do a thing like that. Yeah. Continue. Not going to do it. I, I'll go get a job somewhere else before I ever do that. Never going to happen. Now, let me just make this clear. The Trinity is a New Testament doctrine. And everybody pay attention. If I catch anybody not pay attention, I'll call you out. You pay attention. You look up here and listen. and look. You look in the verses with us as we're reading. Okay, this is important sermon. Don't think, oh, I already know this. You listen anyway. You say, well, you sound mad. You better know I'm mad. Yeah, I am mad when my employees stab me in the back. Oh, uh, where in the Bible does a New Testament pastor have employees? That's enough of this one. We're not going to keep watching that boy here. But, um, again, I think this guy could do something very violent. Extremely violent. And if you're a member of that church, you're going to probably get called in, you know, for questioning and whatever else. I wouldn't go near that place. I mean, not even because of the false doctrine or whatever, but he's getting more and more dangerous. I mean, I've gotten, I've had a lot of people contact me over the years and say that, they started going to Steven Anderson or listening to Steven Anderson, you know, started going here actually and started listening to Steven Anderson and some things just didn't seem right and the Lord led them to my videos and they got straightened out doctrinally or whatever and, you know, they said, oh, thank you, brother. Thank you for standing against Steven Anderson. That's why I do this. That's why I expose this guy and that's why I've exposed him for years and years and years. But I think it's building up to something. I think it's building up to a very violent end of some kind and I don't know what that is I'm not hoping for that I'd love to actually see Stephen Anderson get saved in, in all truth I really would uh, he's not saved he preaches a false gospel teaches that Jesus burned in hell he's a Holocaust denier teaches that the Jews are not over in Israel and things and he's got so many errors no repentance connected to salvation he attacks Peter Ruckman while upholding Jack Hiles yeah that's smart I mean there's just so much with Anderson but, uh, you know, I'd love to see him change. I'd love to see him get saved. He's not saved. But what he's doing, and he's getting worse and worse, and he's just starting to go after people that are close to him, that disagree with him, um, and actually say, you know, I, I mean, these guys that are leaving, the Tyler Baker and the, and the Garrett Kurtzway and thing, they're not even going over to the biblical Godhead. They're going into weird belief systems of modalism or oneness or whatever else. They're not even going to the truth but still it's just you know they disagree and it just you know he's cutting people off and you better look at me you better look up here or I'm gonna kick you out it's scary when they get to this level when the ego is built up so high that they'll start to do these erratic things and it's not just Anderson but I'm gonna just just want to show you something here the thing of Hitler if you're not you know familiar with history here Hitler executed 84 of his generals towards the end of Hitler's regime he just was ex you know suspecting everybody was against him and a lot of more they were trying to kill him you know towards the end they were trying to assassinate him but you get down through here all these different generals there's Rommel there and there's a bunch of others and things I'm not familiar with but all these different generals were either forced to commit suicide or they were just flat out executed by Hitler because Hitler he just was the I'm the man here, I'm the man in charge, I'm the Fuhrer, you know, and, and how dare you question me, and, and you know, and he just started cutting the throats of anybody that dis disagreed with him. That's what Anderson's doing right now. Um, and, of course, Anderson in his, his video, uh, Marching to Zion, he actually used Nazi propaganda films to attack the Jews. So, interesting tie-in there. But this guy here, I mean, this bro brother Bruce Mejia guy, look at this. Let him be anathema. Right now, here he's talking about Garrett Kirchway. Listen to what he says. But I don't think we need to be naive. You know, and just be ignorant and be so snowflakey that we just accept every single false doctrine that comes our way. You know, if they are a false teacher, i.e., Garrett Kirchway. Yeah. You know, I, I like Garrett. I liked him at one point. I thought he was a great man. You know, I, I, I esteemed him as a friend. Him and I kept in contact. He was my supervisor, you know. 
But if he believes in oneness, then okay, then let him be a, let him be anathema. That's if he believes in oneness, let him be anathema. Exactly what Jesuits wrote in the church teaches. Hmm. Let's continue. He actually uses profanity here in a minute. Fine Baptist preacher that he is. Listen to this. That's what he wants. Because here's the thing, it's not just well, maybe he just differs on, on, on the Trinity. It's not it's not about that. If you can listen to a whole entire year of preaching on modalism and what the Bible says about the Trinity, and you still think it's a little different, it's nothing major, then you're anathema as well. Amen. By the way, if anyone here believes that, you need to get the hell out of this church. Amen. <laughs> okay, just use profanity. Get the H out of this church. He didn't say that you're, you're going to hell and things. You get the H out of this church. That is using the, the word hell as a cuss word. And the people, boo -hoo, boo -hoo. yeah, I'm not going to watch any more of that guy. That, this guy just so possessed. His eyes get all big and he, just possessed with devils. Crazy. Here's another nut. This guy's going after Peter Ruckman all the time and things. I don't watch much of this stuff, but you know, I keep an eye on some of these, you know, goons just to see what they're doing. The, the new IFB system. We'll see about that here in just a minute, but it's really, really weird stuff. But uh, let me just uh, let me do something here quick. Move that over there. All right. Um, listen to this. Anyways, go to Isaiah chapter number forty-eight. We'll only be there a moment. I think this guy Joe Major here. I think he's a Hiles graduate. Another Anderson spinoff. But let's continue. And, and I know most of you already have heard probably what went on at Faithful Word Baptist Church that they had to kick a heretic out of their church. That was uh, Garrett Kirschway that that had kind of snuck in. This guy was an ordained Pentecostal minister back in the day, and had supposedly repented of all that and uh, and come to the truth. And and uh, he was kicked out of the church because he did not believe in the Trinity, and he was. Uh, he's oneness, does not believe in the Trinity. And I just want to say this here tonight. There are a lot of things that you can disagree with me on. And you can still come to this church. You can disagree with me on the pre-trip or post-trip pre-wrath. You can disagree with me in time of the rapture. You can disagree with me on the nation of Israel. And you can still come to this church. You can, and I'm not saying it's right, but you could listen to rock music and still come this, to this church because that's not a sin the Bible tells me to kick you out of the church for. And, and there are a lot of things that you can disagree with the pastor on, with the church on, but there are key doctrines that you cannot disagree on. There are key doctrines that if you disagree on certain doctrines, you are not welcome at this church. And listen, I'm not saying... Uh, that that if you're just unclear on something, you're not welcome on the, at the church. If you are unclear on the doctrine of the Trinity, you know we'll sit down, we'll take you through it and show you what the Bible says on it, help you to clean it up. I'm not saying that if you're unclear on something, that you're not welcome on the, at the church. What I'm saying is, when you understand what is being preached from the pulpit on certain doctrines, and you disagree on those doctrines. You're not welcome here. And what are some of those doctrines? Well, King James Bible. If you don't believe the King James Bible is the perfect word of God, you're not welcome at this church. Salvation by grace through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't believe that salvation is by faith and it's not of works and it's not of repenting of your sins, well, this is not the church for you. And the doctrine of the Trinity is another one of those doctrines that is not optional. That this is a doctrine that you must believe what it, th this doctrine in order to remain a member here. And listen, again, if you're unclear on it, that's one thing. I'm not talking about you here. Okay, let me just stop again. Oh, brother, this is ridiculous. You're saying that they're Catholics. Um, show me one verse of Scripture that says that the Godhead, you have to believe the Godhead or understand the Godhead or whatever else, exactly understand it, or you get kicked out of the church. weird but the, oh, the trinity is a foundation doctrine okay why isn't it even in scripture then it's added by tertullian after the completion of the new testament continue tonight 
If you need to be shored up on it, that's fine. We'll help you get shored up on it. But if you outright just deny the Trinity and deny what the Scripture says about it, this... What the Scripture says about the Trinity. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. Continue. It's not the church for you. And I'll tell you right now here tonight, if you do not agree with the Trinity, this is not the church for you. You might as well walk out those doors and leave the church and do not come back unless you get it right and you get right over that doctrine because if not, one day you will be found out. And when you are found out, you will be shamed publicly and you will be cast out of the church. Shamed publicly and cast out of the church. You might want to say uh, maybe uh, labeled as a heretic and uh, anathematized. No, they, these are Baptists, brethren. These are these are Baptists. They're not Catholics. They they're doing what the Jesuits say to do, in the church teaches here. But uh, they're not Catholics. They're they're new IFP. Now look at Isaiah chapter number 48 real quick. And look down at verse number 15. The Bible says this in Isaiah chapter number 48. And verse number 15. I okay, he goes into his message thing there now. But you basically heard it. Again, we're going to kick you out if you're not if you're not into this whole the thing. Trinity. Okay. Now we'll listen to Donnie Romero here. Another one of these Anderson cult members. Uh, you got to toe the line. See, you gotta you gotta be in line with Hitler here. Don't want to be one of the generals that gets executed, you know. Yeah, can't think for yourself. Can't be a man on your own. You have to line up with, uh, you know, Father Stephen Anderson, or Bishop, or Archbishop, or whatever he considers himself. Look, the Bible's clear. Go to John chapter eight. Go to John chapter eight. It's clear. Now, there's two things about this that you need to understand. We believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. If somebody does not believe Jesus Christ is God, they don't, they're not saved. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody is just buying in, just totally went full head first about this oneness doctrine, to where they not only are just confused about it, but they like are trying to like fight against the Trinity, saying the Trinity is not biblical, they're not saved. Yeah. 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 Now, people have a hard time saying that. Now, if the Trinity is not biblical. They're not saved if, if they, you know, say that. Uh, well, by just pure scientific means, uh, you can prove, anybody can prove that the Trinity is not in the King James Bible. So, the Trinity is not biblical. <sighs> Weird. Let's say somebody, say that, well, you believe when once saved, always saved until somebody believes different about, about doctrine. Well... I believe I could believe somebody would be saved until they start coming out with all this weird false doctrine. So if somebody comes in, they, they seem to be just like us. Look, I'm not going to go to any one of you and be like, I don't think you're saved. You know what I mean? But when somebody comes out and they're just, let me, let me tell you this. Let's say somebody comes here and they claim to be saved, they believe just like us. But let's say in a year or two, they're literally just denying the deity of Christ and saying you have to be baptized to be saved. And it's not, it's not eternal damnation. It's just like... It's so sleep. I mean, they just go off and they, just, they believe in all this weird doctrine. Nobody would look at me crazy for saying that guy's not saved. Yeah. Yeah. Then you got this whole oneness Pentecostal garbage that comes in. And I say they're not saved and people, do you know what they say? Well, it's not like they're denying the deity of Jesus Christ. Because we act like that's a contrast. We act like denying the deity of Christ is up here. And right here is the oneness, right? And it's bad, but it's not... They're both equally as evil and equally as wicked and Amen. equally as false. Right. The reason why you think the, the denying the deity of Christ is worse is because we've preached about that so much. We've preached about that so often. If you deny the deity of Christ, you're not saved. They have to believe Jesus Christ is God. But we haven't preached against this crowd over here, so you know what it's not? It's not like exceeding sinful. It's not where somebody would say, you know what? You're right. That's really bad. The people that believe in this oneness junk that are over here, there's no doubt that they're not saved. Amen. None. Think about what he just said there. It's a double negative. There is no doubt that they're not saved. Well, then they are saved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. 
Here we go. Continue. Right. Zero doubt. You say, well, they're preaching Jesus. Another Jesus. Yeah. 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 The Mormons preach about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The Jehovah's Witnesses preach a name Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The Church of Christ is preaching about Jesus. The Catholic Church is preaching about Jesus, but they're talking. Huh? What? Huh? Huh? The Catholic Church is preaching about Jesus. Yes, uh, Princess. And uh, they teach the Trinity. That's where the whole teaching of the Catholic or the whole Trinity teaching comes from. Tertullian, a church father, developed the word Trinity. The, the Catholics are teaching another Jesus. Yes, Einstein, and it's the Trinity. Let's continue. Talking about another Jesus, another gospel, and another spirit. Amen. 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 Look at John 8, verse 47. He that is of God heareth God's word. Let's, let me say that again slower. He that is of God heareth God's word. Amen. If you can't, if you can get shown something, not just once, twice, but just a multitude of times, and you just, not only do you deny it, but you fight against it, you resist the truth, you're a man of corrupt mind. <laughs> he that is of God heareth God's words, okay? Um, where's the word Trinity again at? I don't remember where. Someplace there. No. That's what it says in 2 Timothy 3. And the Jews answered and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast the devil? Jesus answered, I am not a devil, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. I seek not mine own glory. It's funny, right after this, he starts talking about how I don't seek my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judges. Jesus Christ is not here to glorify himself. He's glorified. He's here to glorify the Father. Amen. Amen. Now how can he, if he is the Father, he is glorifying himself. Yeah. Yeah. If I bear witness in myself, my witness is not true. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. Okay. Uh, we just were in John chapter 8 there. Somehow... Donnie missed a few verses there. You, you know, see, it, it cracks me up. These Baptists, they're they're so famous for this. They'll paint themselves into a corner. They're realizing that they're starting to make themselves look like a fool. And so you just start saying, you start to yell and things, and you go, and Jesus was doing that! And you, and you yell and people go, amen. Wow, I guess I should amen now because I'm being yelled at. It's really kind of funny. So he's down here in, uh, what, verse 48, verse 49 here. Is what he was just reading. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Okay? Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. They go down through here, they say, you know, um, then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead in the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Um, just, you know, and that, art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me. I thought nut job here just said that Jesus didn't come to, to be honored. Isn't that kind of weird? Of whom you say he is your God? Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you, but I know him and keep his saying. All right? And then he goes on to say, you know, they say, you know, hast thou seen Abraham? And Jesus saith unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am God the Father's title. Jump up to verse 24 of this exact same chapter. Actually, go up to verse uh, 19. He's talking about, where is, they say, where is thy father? Jesus answered, you neither know me nor my father. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. And then he goes down here in verse 24. He says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. What's the context? He's talking about the father. And he says, if you don't believe that I am he, you'll die in your sins. But I guess I should be careful what I'm saying because I might get kicked out of one of Anderson's churches or one of his little satellite harlot churches here. Oh, well, that's right, I don't go to one. So I guess I can just speak freely. Let's continue with this little nut job here. If he is, if it's just this, 
Like, let me put it in the words that Garrett Kirch would put it. He was just a clone of the father. Wait. Wait. Yes. Wait. Yeah. I was watching the video and I was disappointed because I expected so much more out of him and his, his arguments were the worst. He said spirits don't have bodies. Well, my spirit has a body. <laughs> the angels are, are ministering spirits. See, okay. And, and you, you know, I'm sure if Garrett Kirchway said all this stuff, whatever else, what, heretical, whatever. But see, the whole thing is you're dealing with all these lost people. And they're trying to formulate doctrines about the Trinity and whatever else, and oneness and modalism. and They can't arrive at the truth because the Holy Spirit of truth is not leading any of them. That's the whole point here. That's why they're getting angry and, and screaming heretic and we're going to kick you out of this church and whatever else. If you, are, if, you believe, if you don't believe in the Trinity, you're out of here, you know. So, I'll finish up. There's a little bit left to go. This is a good comedy. Right? Yeah. Angels have bodies, my friend. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Uh, look at this. Look at this ending here. These conservative Baptists. You know, sounds like Hollywood. Like a Hollywood movie. Watch this. Okay, I go, got to go back here a little bit. Steadfast Baptist presents. Okay, King James Bible preaching, new IFB. What's with all the little triangles everywhere? Downward pointing triangle, upward, kind of upward to the side a little bit. You're dealing with a satanic cult here, is what you're dealing with. But I'll show you one other thing here. Just put this one in it and that is this thing of uh, Paul Wittenberger here framing the world he's the Hollywood movie guy um, and he worked for Hollywood for years and years and years as a faithful attendee of Stephen Anderson's cult uh, making Anderson's documentary films while working in Hollywood I kid you not again I've proved that in other videos but right here's the the famous heretic now this Garrett Kirchway uh, again, you know, this has got to be you know, kind of rough for Paul Wittenberger here. He keeps trying to make money off of the Anderson cult and he comes out with America, you know, Babylon USA movie and Anderson comes against Ken Hoven. Uh, okay, and so he comes out with something else and he comes out, keeps coming out with products here and here's one with Garrett Kirchway being a good guy, but now Garrett Kirchway is a heretic. So, you know, I guess another, you know, project that flopped. But see, Steven Anderson is just going to keep on doing this thing over and over and over again of just more and more people being kicked out, cutting more and more people's throats. Uh, I really seriously, uh, to anybody out there that's part of this cult system, any of these guys, him, Anderson, or this guy here, or the Donnie Romero, or the other guy, whatever, Joe Major, or whatever, any of these offshoots of Anderson, this new IFB movement, I would run from it. All right, run away from these people. They're papists. All right? Better think about that. 